Mountain. NASA reveals planet that can destroy the Earth. This is the end, and the day after tomorrow portray the end of the world, yet today we've brought you something far from these movies and close to reality. A planet that NASA believes exists and can destroy the Earth in the near future. So welcome back to another video where you'll explore something no one had told you before. Let's hop on to the details and learn the reality of this claimed planet. Chapter 1. What is this planet? If you were born in the 90s, then you already know that our solar system had nine planets sequentially. Mercury, Venus, Earth, Mars, Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, Neptune, and Pluto. Where Pluto was given the rank of a dwarf planet back in 2006, and we were left with only eight planets in our solar system. Although we have come far in learning about the solar system, the formation of different planets, and the life on these planets, but if I say that we are still far away from the things that actually reside in the solar system, then you might be surprised with my words. The numerous solar systems we have found in our galaxy do not have a fixed count of planets like our solar system, which has eight planets. There is a possibility that these neighboring solar systems might have uncountable super-Earths in them. These super-Earths are planets bigger than our planet Earth, yet more minor than the gas planets like Jupiter and Saturn. One super-Earth can be more massive than Earth in size, however the surprising thing is it's 1.7 times lesser radii than the Earth's radius. These super-Earths are abundant and the most common type of planet in our galaxy, but we don't have an exact number of these super-Earths. Is our solar system with eight planets home to a super-Earth? My answer will be, it's not revealed yet. Chapter 2. Then how can it destroy Earth? Well, your question is obvious. If Super-Earth is not revealed in our solar system yet, then how can it destroy Earth? So that's where our actual story starts. There is no Super-Earth discovered in our solar system, but scientists and astronomers wish to have a Super-Earth so they can study its motion, interaction with other planets, its effect on our Earth, and the life upon it. This wish coupled with the two significant gaps in our planetary existence. The first large gap lies between the sizes of the planets. Earth is a small terrestrial planet, while Neptune is a gas giant with a considerable distance between these two planets. Secondly, there is a massive physical gap between Mars and Jupiter. According to Kane, planetary scientists wish there were something between Mars and Jupiter because it appears to be a waste of space. Considering other solar systems, such a colossal gap contains many planets, but we are unaware of such existence in our solar system. As Professor Stephen Kane said, in other star systems there are many planets with masses in that gap. We call them super-Earths. This led to an experiment at the University of California, Riverside by Professor Stephen Kane. It is one of the most extreme approaches up till now to understand the history of our planets together with the super-Earth. Chapter 3. What does the computer simulation by Stephen Kane demonstrate? The experiment involved making a new planet with a computer simulation. The actual purpose was to find how the presence of a super-Earth in our solar system can affect Earth and other planets. The dynamic computer model by Professor Kane contains super-Earth between the region of Mars and Jupiter. The planetary space around Jupiter currently holds an asteroid belt in reality. This is the region where Kane added the imaginary planet because he proposed that scientists wish for the existence of a planet between Mars and Jupiter. 
As referred to by Phaeton, the asteroids in the asteroid belt around Jupiter are actually remnants of a failed planet that was trying to form billions of years ago. Yet the scientists believe that the gravitational force of Jupiter smashed up the planet into many pieces, now floating as asteroids around it. The gravitational pull of Jupiter never allowed this mass to collect and form a planet again. Yet, if you collect all the mass of these asteroids, it is less than 4% of the Earth's moon. Even today, the current structure of the asteroid belt is maintained with the gravitational pull of Jupiter. It prevents the asteroids from clumping together. Kane's computer simulation proposes that the existence of a super-Earth in between Mars and Jupiter can destroy our solar system into pieces that will never be able to unite again. Even a little touch of this imaginary planet to Jupiter will cause unimaginable havoc in our solar system. This initiates a thought of thankfulness that we don't have such a world in our solar system because otherwise there might have been an end already. Yet contradictory to this, scientists still wish to observe a super-Earth close enough to know more about it. This may be considered selfishness of the scientists that they are ready to propose havoc in our solar system at the cost of studying that super-Earth. Another question here is why don't these scientists visit the super-Earths in other solar systems in our galaxy? The reason is they are too far away from us that it is almost impossible to reach them with the help of a spaceship or rocket. So the only thing possible is to have a super-Earth in our own solar system to study it efficiently. Chapter 4. Can Super-Earth Destroy Earth? So back to the computer simulation. Depending on the mass and exact location of this imaginary super-Earth, it can interfere with the gravitational pull of the other planets in the solar system. First of all, it will more certainly affect the first four planets, but Saturn and Uranus will not be left unaffected by the effect of this planet. These planets will ultimately fly out of their orbit in space. Imagine Earth far away from the sun with a freezing temperature. No life would be possible on such a cold planet, ultimately proving that the existence of a super-Earth in our solar system can destroy life on Earth. Earth will ultimately be lost in interstellar space without any particular orbit. It will no longer orbit around the sun. Also, there is a possibility that it might orbit around our galactic center. You might not know the surprising fact that our solar system takes around 230 million years to complete one circle around our galactic center. The last time our solar system was in this position, the Earth was inhabited by dinosaurs, eliminating the chance of the existence of humans on Earth. Chapter 5, Super Earth in Between Neptune and Uranus. Despite the idea that the existence of a super-Earth can destroy our solar system, there is a hypothetical belief by scientists of the existence of a planet beyond Neptune in our solar system. This planet originated in 2014 and is called Planet 9. When the astronomers Constantine Batygin and Mike Brown at the California Institute of Technology noticed an unusual clustering in the orbits of some distant Kuiper Belt objects. The Kuiper Belt lies beyond Neptune and is a region where numerous icy objects reside. So a new clustering of these objects in this belt suggested that something is being formed that was not known before. And a suggestion for this clustering is the formation of a new Planet 9, taking the place of Pluto. The exciting thing is the cluster appears to be massive enough and can affect the orbits of other planets in the solar system. Its estimated size is 10 times the size of Earth and is expected to orbit almost 20 times away from the Sun as compared to Neptune. Following this observation, many other scientists provided shreds of evidence that support the existence of this Planet Nine. 
One of the pieces of evidence is the tilt of the solar system's plane relative to the plane of the Milky Way, the orbits of several other objects in the Kuiper Belt, and the alignment of other orbits. However, despite all these proofs, we cannot yet say that there's a definite existence of Planet Nine in our solar system. So what's expected in the future? Even though NASA puts its effort and money into predicting what will happen in the future, there is no definite theory or understanding of whether there is a possibility of a super-Earth in our solar system. Super-Earths can be unpredictable and have multiple sizes and surfaces. Some super-Earths may have surfaces like Earth, while others may have thicker atmospheres just like gas giants. The features of super-Earths help in proposing the existence of life on them. For example, a super-Earth may have a thick atmosphere and a greenhouse effect. This proposes the existence of water and, ultimately, life on it. The existence of super-Earths is also of huge interest for astronomers and scientists because they help to understand the existence and formation of planets. However, one thing is clear, that if we happen to have such a world in our solar system, then we will no longer survive its effects. The interaction of its gravitational pull with the orbits and gravitational pull of the planets in our solar system will ultimately end everything, leaving no sign behind of any life on Earth.